What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nora and thank you so much for watching. Before we jump into today's video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Follow your girl on Instagram because you already know we're growing the family across all platforms. So for today's video, we are going to be jumping back into another girl talk. Y'all know I love these videos. I thoroughly enjoy just sitting down, talking, sharing my opinions, creating you know a safe space for us to just have candid, open, fun conversations. So I figured today would be a really good time to jump into this topic. I mean, as much as I feel like on social media we talk about relationships until we are blue in the face, it's just, it's just a part of life. It's something we talk about. You see it all over social media. Um, there's never a day that goes by without me seeing a sound bite from a podcast, a blog, something someone said on the internet around relationships that might be, you know, a little bit spicy, unpopular opinions, whatever it may be. Um, I just felt like, you know, it was time. We've done some relationship talks on my channel before, but it's been a little bit so I was like you know what let me sit down you know with my family let's talk about relationships a little bit today um, I am on here just oh natural again sometimes I told y'all we gonna keep it real and funky on this channel and sometimes you know I just want to sit here just looking like me and hopefully having some good conversations so without further ado hopefully you all enjoy this video and let's jump right in all right so we should be pretty good with lighting I am as always, recording during the day, so you know we've got natural lighting. It's a pretty beautiful day here in the Boston area, but hopefully we should be pretty good. But y'all already know I'm gonna be looking down at my phone. I got a couple little notes on some things that I wanted to talk about, but I'm just going to say I am not a relationship expert. I do not have a license in Reno you know, relationship therapy, couples therapy, anything like that. This is just my opinion on you know a couple topics that i wanted to talk about today i always say let's continue the conversations down below let's keep this you know a respectful space obviously everyone is entitled to their opinion but let's continue the conversation down below and see what everyone uh wants to share and thinks about some of the things we talk about today so uh kind of just thinking around relationships there were three different like i guess you could say topics buzzwords things i've been hearing that really stuck out to me and i just felt like you know we should just jump right in kind of chat a little bit about them share my opinion and like i said we'll continue uh down below but first off there has been this like constant chatter around splitting bills uh being in a relationship and you know as a woman your man should pay all the bills in the household you know who takes care of the finances x y and z it has just been all over my social media okay child you get on twitter everybody is just chatting and sharing their opinion and i thought this was a really interesting conversation because for the most part at least from what i was seeing they were pretty like polarizing stances like you were either one side or the other you either had people that were just like no when i'm in a relationship my man needs to cover everything no if ands are bust that's what it is boom done and if you're doing anything opposite your relationship's whack your man is a lame get out of that relationship okay you had like that extreme and then you had another extreme where it was just kind of like um and i don't even want to call them extreme i guess i should just say varying opinions but you had the other end where it was kind of just like oh i think that's so archaic to think that way blah 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 right okay so then you got me here, Nora, sitting here thinking about this. And I just kind of started reflecting like, okay, how, how do I feel about that? You know, what are my thoughts kind of on this? And I feel like some things people might be like, yeah, girl, spot on. I agree with you. Some things might be a little bit like unpopular opinion and it is what it is. Okay, we're going to jump into it. So for me and a lot of the things that we're going to talk about today around relationships, the first thing I say for everything is who cares what you are doing in your household and your relationship i think whatever works for you and your partner do that and i think a big issue that we have with society as a whole is that we are constantly and i say we just using that as a blanketed obviously not singling out you know one gender versus the other demographic anything like that but i think just society as a whole we try to place these like stipulations guidelines standards that everyone has to follow and then when someone challenges that it's like whoa shaking the table and i i just think that's like the dumbest thing ever um we are all individuals we're we're different people we believe different things and i think your relationship and i've said this before on my channel your relationship is between you and your partner and you and your significant other whatever works for you and in your household 
is all that matters. And if you don't agree with it, if my friends don't agree with it, if my parents don't agree with it, that's their prerogative. Obviously, they're absolutely entitled to their opinion. But whatever works in my household works for us. And if that works for them, that's all that matters. So when I hear people getting so defensive around like this whole splitting bills thing, I'm kind of like, well, what difference does it make to you? Because for one, the money's not coming out of your pocket. You're not paying their bills. And if it seems like it's working for them, that's fine. Now, if you have a friend, you know, a girlfriend, your guy friend, whoever comes over to you and is just like, oh my God, I need help. I need to get out of this situation. Um, you know, it's kind of giving like obviously abusive things. That's a completely different story. That's not what we're talking about but whatever works for them, works for them. For me personally, I, candidly speaking, have never really grown up in an environment where I saw like the, the husband or the father, you know, handling all the bills. Unless they was hiding it from me, okay? I, I don't know, I didn't see that. I very much saw that everything was split. 50 50 that's just always what it was um you know rent mortgage bills whatever it was just kind of just split down the middle um it wasn't really a tip for tap but it could very well be like okay you covered groceries this week or this month whatever it was but i always grew up in an environment where that's just what i saw um for a lot of like my extended family that was a lot of what we saw as well so for me it was never really bothersome it was never really taboo to hear that Oh, me and my significant other, myself and my partner are splitting bills because again, that was just my norm. However, y'all already know, I'm always, you know, switching things up. I'm always open to hearing other things. And as I've gotten older and I've, you know, been in relationships, met other people, um, you know, girlfriends, you know, uh, some of my guy friends just talking to them. I have realized that that's obviously not the case for everyone. Um, and I'm always open to hearing, learning, getting other people's opinions on, you know, why they do certain things, certain ways. And, you know, if there are certain things I want to, you know, adapt and adopt into my relationship, great. So now 30 year old Nora looking at it again, I still very much feel that you do whatever works for you in your household. Um, if I am in a relationship and my significant other wants to cover the majority of the bills because for him, that makes him feel like, hey, you know, I am taking ownership and leadership in the household and kind of like steering the ship, baby, be my guest, I, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna argue with him and stop him from doing that. But it also wouldn't deter me away from being in a relationship with someone if they didn't want to split the bills, if that makes sense. Um, I guess for me, my biggest thing that I'm looking for is, okay, if financially we can't, you know, you're not gonna cover everything, at least there are other things in the household that we can carry the weight of together. Um, I know there are also conversations that sometimes come around of, you know, well, if one, you know, partner makes significantly more money uh, than the other partner, kind of what are your thoughts there? Now, I'm going to tell y'all right now, this is probably going to shake the table because I think some people are not going to agree with this. But however, um, you know, if your boyfriend, fiance, husband is making significantly more money, I, I, I feel like he should be paying um, majority of the bills. Now, granted, you might not be able to provide financially, but hopefully you can provide in other ways in the household and kind of support in other ways. Now, if the female, the woman is making significantly more money, again, hear me out y'all. If the woman is making significantly more money, I think the same standards need to apply. I think your partner should then be able to step up and support the household in other fashions. And I know sometimes people miss that part where it's like, well, she makes more money, so she's doing X, Y, and Z, but then now she has to come home and still prepare dinner. She still has to do all the laundry. She's still upkeeping the home. If you have children, she's still the one. And that's where I kind of feel like there's a, a little bit of a, not so much of a balance there where it's kind of like, all right, you're, you're taking advantage of her. Not only she, not only is she financially supporting your household, but she also does everything else around your home to support the family. And I think that's where it gets unfair. So I personally feel like no matter on what side, you're on, um, you know, if it's, you know, the male or the female who is bringing in more money, I, I just feel that you should probably 
be carrying your weight elsewhere. I will say though, I did see um, a couple points about, you know, if you are the, you know, the, the female, the woman in the relationship who is uh, making significantly more money, sometimes people get a little bit concerned now about like masculine energy versus feminine energy. Uh, you know, now the woman kind of feels like, okay, well, I'm pretty much the male in the relationship. I'm a little bit more dominant because I'm carrying the finances and the load. Um, I can kind of see that as well too. And I want to point out something here when I'm, I'm specifically using terms like male or female energy, um, you know, being maybe a little bit more dominant versus submissive. That does not mean that it's automatically synonymous with just men or women. Um, all of us humans, male or female, we do have different varying levels of you know male energy feminine energy feminine versus male energy you know being more feminine more masculine these are energies that everyone carries not just not just women are feminine and not just men are masculine um so i do understand kind of the thought process there where okay well now she's the one who makes significantly more money she's going to tap into more of that masculine dominant um kind of like leader energy rather than being submissive and Again, this might be a little bit of an unpopular opinion. I can kind of see why, you know, if, if, if you feel, you know, as a woman that now you are in a place where, I mean, again, the household doesn't move forward without you, um, both financially and in terms of what you can support in the household. I do kind of understand why sometimes you'll see in relationships where you, you will get some women who are kind of like, okay, well, what else can you bring to the table what else can you provide in this relationship and i think a lot of times it's met with so much negativity and i don't really think that's a bad thing to say and it's not necessarily saying that just because you can't pay for things what else can you what else can you provide it's like hey babe i've got it i've got it covered on this front and i'm fine with having it covered there but what else can you do to continue helping support me and support our family and support our household i already know some people are probably not going to like that stance there um Kind of like I said, just my opinion. I do understand why sometimes it might be a little bit tougher, uh, you know, for a woman to lean into her submissive stance, you know, if she is the one kind of carrying the load across the board. Do I think it's completely impossible? No. Um, you know, I will candidly say for myself, I have been in relationships where I was the breadwinner, I was making significantly more money than my partner. Um, so I was able to financially kind of carry the load, you know, with other things, but I will say, my partner made me feel safe and comfortable in my relationship that I could and still wanted to be submissive and felt like I was in a safe space to be submissive because they were able to provide other things in our relationship to make me feel that way. So I think it's I think it's a fine line and I think it's something that you just have to kind of look at within your relationship to understand that, okay, if my partner can provide X, what can I provide to also leverage, um, you know, our family, our household to make us, you know, kind of live the way that we would want to without getting so boggled down on the finances. But I don't know, do with that as you will. Y'all already know I kind of just like to go off the dome and off the top with that. I think it is a very interesting topic, but ultimately do what works for your household. If you are happy with it, do what you feel makes sense in your household. I am one of those people that, you know, I think it's something that you talk about up front, you communicate whatever your household feels comfortable with, that's what you should do. But continuing with that conversation there, which was another topic I wanted to talk about today, um, that oftentimes are kind of attached with this like splitting bills and the finances and all that great stuff is gender roles. And I'm telling y'all this gender roles, like we need to just put this on a bingo card for every year because I feel like no matter how much we talk about it, we continue talking about it. So here's my stance, okay, with gender roles. Um, I, I think gender roles are, archaic okay i think a lot of the things that we tend to assign to one gender versus the other a lot of them are life skills a lot of them are things that all of us in our big age should be able to do for example y'all most of you who know i'm not a chef i'm not a good cook i can do what i need to do to survive and make sure that i can put together a meal and that it will taste good i have been able to put together meals for my partner and my significant other that they were very pleased with that was great love nutritious all that great stuff am i a chef no by no means am i you know mrs ratatouille in the kitchen I'm, I'm that's just not me it's never been my thing i don't really enjoy you know cooking it's not something i uh, love doing but I do understand it is a life skill. If I am ever in a predicament where I need to be able to feed myself or feed my children, my family, whoever it may be, you should probably know how to cook. I am so far past and over this conversation of, 
uh, while men are essentially going through a checklist of, you know, a suitable woman, you know, fit to be a wife, if she can cook or not. Because sir, if you at your big age still can't put together a meal to nourish yourself, that is a problem. And if normally you were used to seeing, as a lot of times I see these example of, you know, my mom was the one who made the meals, you are absolutely right. So let's start at the beginning of that sentence again. And the key operative word is mom, <laughs> okay? Mom, if you wanna be with your mom, be with your mom, that's fine. This is not your mom, this is your wife, this is your girlfriend, this is your partner. And I think it is important to understand that some of these things that we still keep tagging onto a specific gender are simple life skills that you should be able to have. Speaking to my ladies out there, listen, I am not Bob the Builder. I am not a mechanic, but there are simple things that I should be able to figure out or be resourceful enough to figure out. I can't probably hang my own TV, but let me tell y'all, one thing I can do is get on TaskRabbit, get on Google, and find a resource out there to help me do so. I'm sure plenty of us have friends that could help us do that. I can change a light bulb. I can, you know what I mean? So it's just like, of course, there are gonna be things that you might not be as skilled in, but we have more than enough resources that if you needed to figure that out, you can figure it out and stop relying and labeling things. Well, that's his gender role, that's her gender role, and realize, honestly, guys, at our big age, they are life skills that we all should have. I, again, am very big on whatever works in your household works for you. If you prefer that, hey, I'm gonna be the girlfriend, the wife, the fiance, whatever that does prefer to be at home, take care of the house, the cooking, the cleaning, the laundry, and all that good stuff, that's fantastic. And as long as your partner is okay with that and your partner is clear on what they need to do to provide you know, support, then great. If you have decided, no, we are going to split that, then split it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I, 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 like I said, I'm not the cook, but I will clean. I will clean all day. Very weird of me, I thoroughly enjoy laundry. I love doing laundry, I love folding, I love organizing clothes, so that's my jam, and that works. That works for me, that works for me in my household. Do whatever works best in your relationship. But I get really annoyed when I just see men or women going out there with these blanketed statements, speaking for every single human being on earth of what they're supposed to be doing in their relationship, and it's like, don't be mad at us that you still don't know how to boil eggs. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Like you should be able to figure that out. YouTube is a great resource, guys. It is, it is essentially a search engine. Use it. I don't understand how we are still so caught up on these gender roles and trying to tell people because you're a woman, you should be the one doing this. Because you're a man, you should be the one doing this. Now, again, if we wanna talk about you know, being submissive or the dominant one, masculine versus feminine energy, yes, traditionally we do say, you know, the male will be the person who is a little bit more dominant, more of the leader in the household. And I use obviously quotes, because again, do with that as you will. But even with this term of us saying traditionally, I don't know about y'all, but in 2022, I don't really see much tradition anywhere. <laughs> like there isn't really a lot of tradition in a lot of things anymore. So I think for us to pick and choose as a society when we want to be traditional is kind of counterproductive and honestly it's asinine. It's asinine to sit there and say, well, I want to uh, you know, live with my partner before marriage. I'm going to engage in sexual activities before marriage. I want to be able to date as many people as I, all these other things that we have strayed away from as being traditional and now all of a sudden you want a traditional girlfriend, you want a traditional relationship. Ain't shit about us traditional. Like <laughs> nothing, nothing really, and I, nothing, and I'm using that obviously loosely. Obviously, I'm sure there are some people who are still pretty traditional with certain things, but I can't imagine us in 2022 being so strict and looking for the traditional woman or the traditional man when a lot of our everyday lives isn't really traditional anymore. So gender roles, I don't know. Again, do what makes sense in your household, but I think we have to understand that a lot of these things that we are still trying to tag as a specific gender role are life skills. Grow up and figure it out. Now, there was no way I was going to talk about relationships and these relationship topics without mentioning podcasts, <laughs> specifically our podcast with our counterparts, our male hosts. 
I, I, I had to, I had to bring it up because again, they're everywhere. Obviously, I'm sure a lot of you have seen the viral ones that have gone all over the internet of, uh, you know, the colorism and uh, again, gender roles, splitting bills, all that good stuff. Um, I know Cam Newton just, when this video comes out a couple days ago, had another sound bite that was going viral again about like, oh, women wanting to be a bad bitch, X, Y, and Z, but can you cook? <clears throat> Whatever, nonsense. Um, so I felt like it made sense for us to kind of close out with this conversation on male podcasts. So two things I kind of want to say around this one might be a little bit of a, again, unpopular opinion, but do with it as you will. If someone was to ask me, does it bother me? Am I annoyed? Am I upset with, you know, men making podcasts, talking about relationships, preferences, you know, X, Y, and Z. My short answer is no, it, it, it doesn't bother me because again, um, what they want to do on their podcast is their prerogative. It's up to them. Uh, one, two, I already know uh, the the person I'm in a relationship with and you know, my man is not um, making no fugazi podcast like this. He's not sitting around watching these dudes studying them and being like, yeah, man, I'm trying to get like them. Like, I'm not worried about it because I already know the men that are usually doing these podcasts and, I, and I'm not gonna say all of them, but a lot of these podcasts that I feel like most of us are talking about, they not really my cup of tea anyways. Like y'all not checking for me. Like I don't think I'm the women they're talking about or that they're, you know, trying to attain and they're not the men that I'm looking for. So it doesn't really bother me <laughs> about their opinions on a lot of things because I'm just like, I wasn't checking for you anyways and you weren't checking for me, so great. And again, the the person I'm, I'm you know, obviously involved with or, you know, the men that I would be dating or talking to, ain't really watching that anyways either. So there's that. Um, and thirdly on that front, in terms of if it bothers me, I think again, it'd be kind of crazy for me to assume that men aren't making podcasts like this because to be frank, women are doing it all the time. Like there are plenty of female podcasts out there that, you know, are talking about their preferences, talking about the things that they're frustrated about, you know, with men, things that, you know, men are not, there's, there's plenty, there's a slew of them. So. It would be, again, pretty crazy of us women to think that men aren't creating podcasts to talk about similar things. So it's like, cool, do what you want with your platform, that, that's fine. My issue, I guess I would say, with these podcasts is more so, again, the blanketed statements about women, it's the demeaning uh, statements about women, um, and it is just, again, this, this idea that what you say is law. A lot of these clips I hear these men saying things like what they're saying is factual, it's the end all be all, every woman is like this and every woman needs to be like this. Um, I think a lot of people who are probably in healthy, happy, successful relationships are not even spending time sitting here on podcast trying to tell people, you know, why relationships aren't working, why women are single, because they're already too busy living their happy life. So clearly, if you are spending all this time on the internet to talk about why all these women out here can't secure a man, you're probably one of the miserable men that a lot of these women don't want to be with. Because if you were in a happy, healthy relationship, I promise you, you'd have a lot bigger and better things to be doing than sitting on the internet talking about what other people should be doing in theirs. That's just me. That's just me. Again, I could be wrong. But me personally, I could not imagine sitting here bashing other men out there and other women and saying, well, this is why nobody wants to be with you because you will pick me. Well, this is why, uh, uh, girl. I'm too busy over here building memories with my significant other to be focused or worried about what y'all doing over there. Okay, I'm not worried about none of it. And it's just like, why use your platform to just continue spewing negativity um, you know, I just think a lot of people sometimes think sharing their opinions are necessary and warranted in a lot of these podcasts. Sometimes it's like, you probably would have been better like, shh, what's that TikTok they say, shh, shh, No, don't say that, don't say that, don't say that, okay? If you're gonna think it, think it, but don't say that. Just, just keep that in your head, no need to share it. I feel like we're just all living in this fairy tale world where everybody, you know, we're looking at these Instagram relationships, the rapper scammers out here with their girlfriends, and you know, everyone is trying to compare themselves to those relationships. You got a lot of men now getting on podcasts trying to compare the women that they're going after, you know, to these women that they're seeing on, on the internet. Um, you know, if there are women aspiring to that, you know, just, and it's just doesn't make any sense to me because again, it's like for one, that's not even the people who are interested in you. And if you are so upset with 
the bad bitch mentality or you're sick and tired of the women who you feel like only want to talk to you if you can buy them Chanel's and Birkins, maybe you should stop trying to go after those women. It's really that simple. If you're sick and tired with women giving you or some women telling you that that's what they're looking for, stop pursuing those women. Like there are so many other people out there in the world. I promise you not everyone thinks or feels that way. Um, you know, for women as well, it's like, well, he needs to be able to do X, Y, and Z. He needs to be able to buy this and do that. Da, da, da. And then you get upset when a dude can't do that. But it's like, ma'am, I don't know what made you think you were going to find that at the hookah spot up the street. Like, you, and I don't know why you thought you were gonna find that there. And then on top of that, if that's what you're chasing after, you should also be prepared with what comes with that. Um, on both ends too, which a lot of things I hear on these podcasts is like, what can you provide? What can you provide? This is what I need, this is what I need. But at least for me, I am not requiring or demanding anything from a partner that I cannot provide myself. I am not going to require you to wine and dine me and buy me all this designer eh, 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 if I can't afford it myself. You cannot require a caviar lifestyle if you can only provide yourself Taco Bell. Sis, the math is not mathing. Bro, the math is not mathing. And I say this on both ends. And then you get people who get on these podcasts and they try to get upset because they had two or three women you know hurt their little feelings and break their tender little hearts and now you get on a podcast and want to say oh women don't want to work women you know don't want to have uh responsibilities in the house women don't want to x y and z gender roles no sir you had two women that clearly weren't the women that you should have probably been talking to because you've been complaining about that type of woman this whole time you approached them they weren't interested and now you're upset and you think every single woman is like that and then again, you keep going back to these archaic things of gender roles, women supposed to do this, my mama used to do this, my mama used to do that. Well then be with your mom. <laughs> be with your mom and leave me the hell out of it. Okay, like, listen, I know some people might not agree with it entirely, but I, that's usually what I kind of feel. It's like, all you keep talking about is my mom did this. Well, my mom used to do this all the time. Well, my dad used to do this all the time. Well then be with your parents. Be with your parents. There's gonna have to obviously be a give or take, and you're gonna have to be realistic. If this is not something you can't even sustain and provide for yourself, it doesn't make sense to require that of someone else. And if that is what you wanna do, which ultimately it's your decision and what you wanna do in your relationship, you're just going to have to find someone else who is okay with doing that. You're gonna have to find someone who's okay with always, you know, Dior me, Chanel me, Birkin me, and you not really bringing anything else to the table. Or, you know, if as a guy, that's all you keep saying you don't like, but you keep going after that, and those are the only women you're talking to, you're gonna have to be okay with the fact that she wants to be Jada Wida. <laughs> like, sis wants to be Jada Wida. So, if that's who you're talking to, that's what you're gonna get, okay? That's really just what it is. But do with that as you will. I'm gonna end you guys all off there. Um, I feel like, we can talk about this on and on, like I said, until we are blue in the face, which is why I feel like every other day there is some sort of trending topic on the internet around relationships. But these were just a couple things that you know stuck out to me over the last uh, you know couple weeks, months that I wanted to talk about a little bit today. Um, but yeah, let's continue the conversation. I'd love to see you know and hear what you all think. Do you agree with you know some of my stances and opinions? Do you disagree? Uh, you know, what do you think about splitting bills? Are you the kind of woman that's like, listen, if you're not paying all the bills, you ain't about to be with me. Um, let's continue. Let's continue chatting down below. Hopefully, you all enjoy this video. Um, I'm excited. I've got a couple um, things up my sleeve for some videos coming up. We've got a lot of fashion content coming back on the channel. Y'all know that's like my first love and I'm really excited to jump back into fashion content. Just had, uh, you know, some other life priorities that were a little bit more important than me doing a shopping spree every other week. But Fashion content is coming, so hopefully you guys are excited about that. But uh, that is it for today's video. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video. I love you so much, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.